Today on the truthaboutcars.com, we are taking a look at the 2015 Ford F-150. The F-150 is a very, very important vehicle because this is the first all-aluminum bodied pickup truck in the U.S. Ford is obviously doing the all-aluminum body to help improve fuel economy. Now this means a few different things. This means that Ford is going in a slightly different direction than some of the other manufacturers. For instance, Chrysler has been betting on their small diesel engine as well as their 8-speed automatic to help improve fuel economy. Ford is really going for this all aluminum construction and General Motors is doubling down on a V6 engine with cylinder deactivation. A vehicle made out of aluminum isn't anything new, but what's new about the F-150 is the sheer volume of aluminum that Ford is consuming because the F-150 isn't just the best selling truck in America, it's the best selling anything in America. And they sell more F-150s in a year than Hyundai sells in the U.S of absolutely every model that they make. Up front, we have everything the modern pickup truck shopper expects from a very bold front end to a very tall hood and the segment's only LED headlamps. Also, as you'd expect, you can get your F-150 in a wide variety of different ways. We have five different wheelbases, three different cabs, three different beds, five different trims, and at the moment, four different engines. And a price tag that ranges from $25,800 to well over $60,000. This particular model is the Super Crew F-150 Platinum, so we do get all the fancy luxury features on the inside and a slightly different look on the outside. For 2015, we get a very different engine lineup than you find in the rest of the competition because there are four different engines, but only one of them is a V8. Things start out with the 3.5 liter V6 engine borrowed from the rest of the Ford lineup, making 282 horsepower. We then get an all new 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, producing 325 horsepower and 375 pound feet of torque. There's a five liter V8 essentially reappearing from last year, good for 385 horsepower. And then there is this 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, producing 365 horsepower and 420 pound-feet in this vehicle. We expect this 3.5 liter engine to get a little bit of a power bump next year in the Ford Raptor because Ford has said it will use essentially this engine knocked up to about 400 horsepower or so. When it comes to comfort, I think the Silverado has the most comfortable base seats in this segment, but the F-150 Platinum takes things to an interesting level with very luxury-like features like this anti-fatigue and massaging seat cushion. So we have air bladders in the seat bottom and in the seat back, and they inflate and deflate to improve leg circulation as well as gently massage your back. Taking a look around the F-150, you'll see that we do have perforated seats because these are both heated and ventilated. You'll notice on the doors that we do have real wood trim in the Platinum model, and Ford has basically just integrated their existing window switches and door switches right there into the F-150 shape. So they do look a tiny bit out of place right there on that hard plastic section. If we move on over to the dashboard, our particular model has the soft touch injection molded dashboards. Again, more real wood trim there. We have a power inverter and 12 volt power outlet, relatively small glove box. We have Ford's existing sync system right here. They also call this My Ford Touch. This will be replaced next year with Sync 3. Below that, you'll find the controls for the dual zone climate control, as well as physical buttons for that My Ford Touch system. This is where we find the USB auxiliary input and a little storage cubby right there for your phones. Two very large cup holders right back there and a very traditional shifter. We can get this in a six seat version, so this is just the console version. An incredibly large storage bin right down there. I have all kinds of stuff jammed in there at the moment. Softly padded, of course. Move on over to the driver's side. This is where you'll find a large LCD instrument cluster. I think this is my favorite in this segment right now. It looks a little bit more attractive and it's a little bit better feature than the one you'll find in the Ram. Fit and finish is something that pickup trucks have always struggled with, and that includes both the American and the foreign manufacturers. That's true in the F-150 as well. We have a few plastic pieces that don't meet quite as nicely, and you will find a lot of hard touch plastics in this cabin. However, as far as pickup trucks go, this has one of the nicer interiors because we get a lot of real wood and real aluminum trim going on in this cabin. We are in the Platinum model, and that extends all the way over here to this new steering wheel design where we have a lot of aluminum going on right here. It has a very nice feel to it. If you're after the best ride in your pickup truck, either on or off-road, that really will be in the Ram 1500. Because Chrysler decided to do something very unusual with that pickup truck, and they used coil springs in the back, not leaf springs like everybody else. There's also an available air suspension in that 1500. That's not to say that this F-150 Platinum's ride out on this gravel road is rough by any stretch of the imagination. This is probably the most civilized F-150 that has ever existed. If you're after the fastest pickup truck, that would be the Silverado with the 6.2 liter V8 engine and the new eight-speed automatic. 
Now, early 6.2 liter engines in that Silverado after the redesign only had the six speed automatic. The eight speed was a late addition, so you can still find both of them on dealer lots. This F-150 with a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 ran zero to 60 in a very respectable 6.5 seconds, but the Silverado will do it almost a full second faster. The turbo really is what's different about this versus the competition. It's very noticeable when I put this in manual fifth gear, and this is a true manual mode. It won't downshift for me even though I am floored. You can hear the turbo start to spool up. Now the engine is only spinning right around 1100 RPM or so, but we're actually accelerating up this hill. That's all possible because of the turbo. You wouldn't get that in the V8 or V6 versions of the competition. This helps compensate in terms of towing ability for the lack of extra gears. So the Ram does get that eight speed automatic, which really helps towing ability. That means that uh, versus especially a four speed automatic, you're not doing that slow down, downshift, speed up, upshift game, repeat, repeat, repeat when you're towing up a hill. This vehicle just uses the turbocharger to give you massive low end torque, whereas the Ram or that Chevy with the eight speed automatic would have more gears to choose from, so they don't have to downshift quite as low. Handling is fairly impressive in the F-150, and handling is something that's a little bit tricky to talk about when there's so many different ways you can configure your F-150, your Ram, or your Silverado. The prime reason that handling is so good, however, and the reason I can confidently say that is because this is lighter than the competition. And the lighter you get a vehicle, if you keep everything else the same, the better the handling you're gonna get. Obviously, fuel economy is going to bounce all over the map if you are towing. We haven't really been doing much towing in the F-150 this week, driving it basically the same as the Ram with the 5.7, the Ram with the diesel, and the Silverado with the 5.3 and 6.2 liter V8 engines. This engine managed to consume more fuel than the 5.7 liter Hemi or the 6.2 liter engine in the Silverado. Over 722 miles have been averaging 16.4 miles per gallon. On essentially that same commute in the Silverado, we were averaging about 18 miles per gallon. In the Ram, we were averaging about 19 miles per gallon. The Ram has a little bit less power going on than the Silverado 6.2, the eight-speed automatic also helps there as well. We start taking the F-150 a little bit further off the beaten path, you'll notice a few things. First off, again, this suspension isn't quite as soft as the Ram 1500, especially with the air suspension. So if you are doing this kind of off-road work on a regular basis and you want the more compliant ride, that would be the air suspension system. Obviously, air suspension will have a few more maintenance concerns associated with it than a traditional suspension setup like this, but again, it depends on what your preference is. The next thing we'll notice really is how well tuned the automatic four wheel drive system in this vehicle is done. So we have the usual four low, four high, four auto and two high. And in four auto mode, this thing really performs quite well. It is almost always sending some power to the front, but unlike other four wheel drive systems, especially older four wheel drive systems, say 10, 12 years old or so, this doesn't have the same binding feeling. So if you're turning the wheel sharply and the pavement all of a sudden gets a little bit of grip like this random piece of asphalt we have on this road right here, the suspension doesn't bind up. It doesn't feel peculiar like some of those older systems can. That really means it's a lot easier to leave this system in 4A all the time if that's something that you'd prefer. Part of the reason that Ford created this kind of a system is that this is going to lead to much more predictable handling, especially on ice and snow, than a more traditional system which would only lock up when slip was detected. So because we're always getting a little bit of power to the other axle, it really helps that out. So why aluminum? Well, in general, for every pound you take out of the vehicle, you can put a pound right back into it relatively easily. That means we get class leading 12,200 pounds of towing capacity and class leading 3,300 pounds of payload capacity in the F-150, depending on the version you get, of course. Not all versions will offer that same kind of payload capacity. Now, the 12,200 pounds of towing comes in the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. The 3,300 pounds of payload comes in the five liter V8 because it's a little bit lighter and the architecture is a little bit different. The towing number doesn't impress me quite as much as the payload number does because in California and in several other states, you actually need a non-commercial Class A or a commercial Class A in order to be able to tow over 10,000 pounds with a conventional trailer. If you don't believe me, go ahead and ask your local highway patrol office or your local DMV. They will tell you how it works. When you compare this to the competition, the Silverado will tow 11,800 pounds maximum and the Ram is 10,450. They're all over 10,000 pounds, so in my book, that makes them all right about even for most people. It's the payload that's really interesting. Let's put that in perspective. If I were shopping for a pickup truck right now, my personal preference would be for the XLT Super Cab with the six seat configuration, the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, the four wheel drive system, the payload package, and the towing package. 
Equipped like that, it would tow 8,200 pounds and you could put 2,160 pounds right back here in the bed. Now, obviously you couldn't do that while you were driving the vehicle because payload capacity does include passengers and cargo. So your passenger weight does subtract from your cargo ability. That's kind of why high payload capacity is actually a little bit more important in a pickup truck. Now comparing that to a Silverado with the 5.3 liter V8 engine, the payload would be right around 1,600 pounds. Towing would be a little bit higher, it'd be around 10,000 pounds. Very similar thing going on in the Ram, similar configuration with the 5.7 liter Hemi. Payload's gonna be a little bit lower, right around 1,500 pounds. Towing is again gonna be about 10,000 pounds. Now if you needed the more towing in the Ford version, you could jump up to the 3.5 liter twin turbo engine, then you'd get 11,000 pounds, which is more than the others you really don't sacrifice any of the payload ability either. I think that personally, I would get the Ram 1500 with the three liter turbo diesel engine and the air ride suspension because I really like the way that suspension feels out on the road. It also helps you level out the rear suspension if you're putting weight in the back so your vehicle doesn't tend to droop in the rear. It also load levels if you have a heavy tongue weight trailer attached. A very close second would be the F-150 with that 2.7 liter twin turbo V6. And I have a feeling if that 2.7 liter engine ever gets the 10 speed automatic, then I would actually prefer this over the Ram. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes with thetruthaboutcars.com. This has been the 2015 Ford F-150. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner up there on your screen and I will see you next week.